Coming up, custom tomahawks for my daughters. I get a bunch of new Civivis and my full case knife collection. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments from this past week was from Vanny101. Vanny says, I've really just started a true appreciation for knives and started collecting at 54 years old. I have a question because everyone seems to have a different idea about quote unquote tactical, and I've become confused. <laughs> what exactly does tactical mean to you, first time watcher? Okay, well, I like that you're saying, uh, what does it mean to me? Because this, you've stumbled upon one of the first great mysteries of knife collecting, this idea of the tactical knife. Tactical knife, uh, I'm going to loosely define it and tell you what it means to me and indeed kind of what it means out there in the world. A tactical knife uh, is something that um, you can fight with and that you can uh, do hard work with. So basically, uh, Tactical knives tend to be overbuilt. They oftentimes are black. This one is not. Uh, and have an aggressive sort of profile. In this case, a Tonto. But you can see uh, tactical knives in any sort of blade shape. But the idea is fighter utility, fighting utility. Tactical always sort of, um, uh, um, what's, the, what's the word? I'm a connotes, um, you know, high speed, low drag lifestyle. I have tons of tactical knives and my lifestyle couldn't be less high speed, low drag. So uh, really it's a, it's a matter of, of form. And this is the kind of form you're looking for. If you're into something tactical, uh, something with great grip, good ergonomics. So the thing stays in your hand, uh, some sort of traction plan as nothing fancy would call it. In, in my opinion, something over 3.25 inches with with a blade that you can both pierce with and slash with effectively and something that's not too thin behind the edge this is what most of us want because that's what cuts best but on a tactical knife you might have to pry open a tank door a tank hatch or or uh, you know uh, cut cables underwater so you're going to want something a little more robust so think robust fighter utility i've gone on way too long see that's what i mean it is one of the true mysteries of knife collecting. Um, everyone defines tactical different, but that's how I define it. Uh, Vanny101, thanks for watching. And uh, I hope that sort of answers your question. Um, but if not, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll try and guide you even more. All right, that being said, let us get to a pocket check. Today in my front right, I had the amazing Model 2 from American Blade Works. This was on my list of best knives of 2023. And I know he announced it, showed it off in 2022, but it, he really picked up speed and was producing these uh, this year. Really well done. Uh, he is uh, Michael Martin, when I say he, and he is a one-man band doing American Blade Works knives. And I have the Model 1 and then this Model 2 and man he does beautiful work all by his lonesome all on his lonesome here uh it's a frame lock titanium frame lock with a 20 cv blade wait is this magna cut i'm sorry this is magna cut that's right this was my very first blade in magna cut and uh it is nicely nicely sharp thin behind the edge but but not uh not in any way too dainty but this thing slices like mad nice point there too uh, so I also was carrying a, a slip joint today, and that was my Great Eastern Cutlery number 15 uh, boys knife. This is a single bladed spear point, kind of a sort of a plain Jane, sort of a pocket knife, truly a boys knife from the old days. Uh, but I really love the autumn jig bone. <clears throat> I have a collection, not a collection. I have like three or four uh of these great eastern cutleries in that style bone and i just love it uh really great walk and talk sorry i'm going to come over to the mic great walk and talk on this knife and uh really done the old-fashioned way and this is one of the ones uh from what is this 2018 so this was made on the old machines uh too so 
a pleasure to carry around. I had that in this uh, little slip in my pocket today. So really love my GECs. Haven't been carrying them lately. Uh, in the waistband, I had this uh, attached with the cord to my belt. This is the auxiliary manufacturing pocket buoy. Thank you so much, uh, Michael Jarvis, for sending this to me. This is such a sweet, sweet little honey of a knife. I love that recurve. Really makes it an effective cutter. Uh, it's a pretty robust behind the edge, um, kind of like some of your mic Microtex. It, it, it approaches that edge at sort of a steep angle, and yet it is so sharp and slicey. And to me, I think the uh, recurve really helps in that. Uh, the coffin-shaped handle buries into the hand perfectly. You can go uh, either Picol style or out the or, or edge out style. Either way, it doesn't matter because it's a symmetrical handle, and it just feels great. Also, in a saber grip, um, a great little utility knife that you could definitely bend towards uh, defensive purposes if need be. Um, it came with a sort of discrete carry uh, style clip, but I prefer this sort of cord carry. This way it just kind of sits uh, in my uh, waistband right behind my belt buckle and I can draw it when I need it. Last up for emotional support and just overall sweetness in the pocket is the After Hours Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. His uh, Ben Belkin's second locking release, this time a full frame lock. Last time it was a... A bolster lock though i wonder if you know what i'm speaking out of school i'm not sure if the ones that aren't full tie they might be bolster locks i got to check that out uh i haven't had the the gumption to because i've been so you know how when you first fall in love with someone you're just uh tunnel vision well i've had tunnel vision on this particular knife i've been carrying it every day as i do when i get a new jack wolf knife but this one has not been buried in the pocket in a leather slip it's been in my back left pocket next to my bandana all the time. And I pull this out and fuss with it and cut with it quite a bit. Um, it's beautiful. It has yet to acquire any, I'm not even going to say what it has yet to acquire because I don't want to jinx it, but still in really great shape, that black PVD uh, coated S90V blade and that black titanium. So gorgeous. Ben Belkin, man, he is, I mean, he hit his stride on his first knife, but um, just coming out with these locking knives. Very, very impressive. All right, this is what I had on me today. What did you have on you? Let me know. Drop it down in the comment. And uh, if there's something that's out there, uh, there are plenty. I know like the uh, like the Amphibian from Microtech is just a for instance, but there are so many knives out there I need to check out that I haven't. And man, it, it's uh, it's not easy being a knife junkie, being a knife collector. But uh, I guess it could be a lot harder. All right. Uh, that being said, this is the Gentleman Junkie knife, and it doesn't get any easier than loving this knife. This is the Microtech uh, Reverse Tonto Malibu, courtesy of Northern Knives up there in Anchorage, uh, Anchorage Alaska. Please excuse. I almost uh, conflated that with Akron, Ohio. So Anchorage, Akron, you know, what's the difference? Uh they sent this here to be the Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway for December. So we're going to wrap the year up with this amazing piece of cutlery. And uh, we've had we've had a few people sign up uh, to be patrons just to get their hands on this. And hey, I got to say, no shame in that. No shame whatsoever. Um, in essence, it would be paying uh, 50, uh, 10 bucks if you won. It'd be winning 10 bucks for this. It's kind of like winning, uh, jumping into a lotto. But uh, any case, uh, this is uh, 20 CV blade steel aluminum with that uh, nice coating that isn't chalky. It doesn't feel weird in the hand. Deep carry pocket clip. Incredible, crispy button lock flipper action on bearings. This is an incredible knife. I really do see what all of the uh, hullabaloo was about. All right. Well, uh, before we get to Knife Life News, I just want to say, if, if you are interested in becoming a patron, quickest way to do that is to go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. It will take you there, and you can check out the three tiers of support uh, we offer. Um, that top tier, the Gentleman Junkie tier, is where you get automatically entered into monthly contests to win sweet knives such as that. Be sure to scan the QR code on the screen if you don't feel like typing. Uh, we get it. So Jim has supplied it for you right there. Uh, again, that's the knifejunkie.com 
slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Lon Humphrey Gunfighter Boy in forged 52-100 steel just arrived from Lon's shop in Ohio. These knives are unique expressions of functional art with a special selection of handle materials handcrafted by Lon. Murray Carter and his highly skilled apprentices make some of the sharpest knives you'll ever find, forging them by hand from laminated Sanmai steel. Choose from a selection of their kitchen cutlery and neck knives available while supplies last. And don't forget a good selection of Bamba Forge knives. These knives are forged by hand with coil springs, sweat, blood, and hand tools only. And Knives Ship Free sells them on their behalf and sends the proceeds back to them for their families. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. The knife junkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Another one from Ostop Hell and Best Tech Knives. Ostop, uh, we've had him on this show. What a great guy. Uh, he's from Poland and he is the, the man who created the bouquet series along with a whole bunch of other beautiful knives. Uh, probably the first front flipper, uh, the Metamorph, uh, that became really popular. Uh, but he is out again with Best Tech with a new one called the QQ, which is a cute knife. Forgive me, I am a father. Uh, he collaborated with Gogo, the eight-year-old daughter of one of the co-founders of Best Tech, to create this, which I think is so cool. Um, I love uh, collaborating with with my children on little projects and stuff like this. This is a big project, and I think it's so cool. Uh, she was inspired by um, crickets, and so that shape is a is a cricket shape. and And Ostop Hell jumped in and and uh, and interpreted her inspiration and turned it into that very cool uh, dagger like knife. It is single edge. That blade hides completely in the thorax. I mean the handle of the knife and uh, uh, it's all milled out to sort of uh, evoke the folded wings of a cricket. Beautiful little knife and the first knife of what will surely be a talent in the future, little eight-year-old Gogo. It is a button lock, 2.2 inch blade. I don't know if we have a blade steel on it yet. It will come in G10 aluminum and then later on, once it has proven itself worthy, Ultim. Okay, next up from We Knives. It's a collaboration with Kyle Lamb of Viking Tactical. You might know Kyle Lamb uh, or you might know Viking Tactics. I'm sorry, Viking Tactics. Uh, they are a company that has had some knives made. Let's see, they did one with Hogue not too long ago, a folder. And then they've done some with Tops, I believe, also some fixed blades. Uh, but he is back with a knife called the Wrecker, R E K K R. A really nice looking uh, upswept reverse tanto. Now everything I just said makes me wanna makes me wanna gag, but uh, I'm I'm just sort of folding to pressure here. Beautifully shaped blade. I love the look of that sharpening notch and the backward uh, facing flipper. It is uh, 3.6 inch 20 CV blade steel, and uh, this is actually taken from a custom model from uh, Viking. Full tie scales. You got that nice. Uh, sort of knurling and or cross hat hatch texture and it comes with a lefty clip which is kind of cool uh 3.46 ounces four finishes is available go check it out it is a it's a nice looking knife and and uh, the the blade length i think um makes it all worthwhile okay next up from kaiser so we had we had best tech we and kaiser today this is the k the K-U-H, the K, I'm thinking is what it's from, is what it's called. And it comes from design duo Bryce Markle Amaral and Roman Worthy, uh, two buddies who have been designing knives. And I guess this is definitely their first one with Kaiser. I'm not sure if it's their first release, though. 154 CM blade steel. You see that nice drop point blade. Uh, this reminds me of something I've seen before uh, with some tweaks. And now I don't remember the company they came and went, uh, but you've got a, uh, you've got a 154 CM blade. That's 3.16 inches long. Um, you got a button lock 
you've got so you can open it with the button lock and whip in your wrist you got thumb studs you got a front flipper you got a top flipper so you got four ways of opening this knife uh so definitely uh Mr. Markel Amaral and Mr. Worthy are knife junkies who like to fiddle with their knives. Uh, really nice looking thing. I like I like this sort of um, oblong finger choil. And um, this looks like a great little utility knife. Uh, that is my card that you're looking at. Three ounces and is now available. So go check it out. Uh, one last bit of Knife Life news. I wanted to talk about my state, uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, some exciting news from Knife Rights. Uh, the, the Knife Rights Virginia Concealed Carry Ban Repeal Filed. So I'm just going to read uh, from the article here. Following up on, on, okay, let me start that over. Following up on repeal in 2022 of Virginia's ban on automatic knives and this year's repeal of the ban on concealed carry of these same knives, Knife Rights good friend, Delegate Lee Ware, has introduced House Bill 11 that would remove Dirk, Bowie, uh, stiletto knife, and razor from the list of weapons that cannot be carried concealed. And then it goes on to talk about some other stuff. But how cool is that? So uh, let's see. It was two July 1st ago. Um, automatic knives were made legal in my state. And then it was last July 1st that the concealed carry of said knives was made legal. And now we have Delegate uh, Lee Ware. Uh, with House Bill 11, striking the famous Dirk Bowie knife, stiletto, and razor uh, bit from the text, which is great because, first of all, um, you know, Dirk, this is all very old. Um, unless you're a knife junkie, this is all very old terminology. Like, who's carrying around a Dirk? What is a Dirk exactly? I know it's, a, I know what it is, but, um, you know, these are all kind of things people aren't carrying. They had to outlaw this stuff in the reconstruction, and now they're just getting around to making it legal again. So we're all very happy. Thank you to Delegate uh, Ware, and of course, thank you to uh, Doug Ritter and Knife Rights. None of this would be possible without any of y'all. So you're making my state a better place to live. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection, and then after that, all of my case knives. Do you like the sound of the alphanumeric combinations M390, 204P, and 20CV, but bristle at 8CR13MOV and AUS-8? You are a knife junkie. Probably worse. I was going to do something fancy, but I got my mic here. I know I'll just do something embarrassing. So I'm going to show you these uh, beautiful BB Tomahawks uh, by, by Bravehawk Forge. I've had... Uh, uh, jake sewell on a couple of times and i bought his tomahawks and i went to his knife show i'm a big fan and uh, he makes these little mini tomahawks uh inspired by his two-year-old boy and uh here just so you can see what they how they compare this is a full size um this is the full size Francesca Tomahawk I bought while in Texas. So these are little but they're definitely capable and he made them razor sharp at my request. They have to have respect. Uh, so I got these for Christmas. So the girls, they don't watch this show. They're not going to, it's not going to be a spoiler, but I uh, had them uh, with their names laser etched in there. There's Eden and Olympia. And the cool things about these, these are made from farriers rasps. And then there's some uh, high, more high carbon steel. I think, is this one? Oh, I guess the whole thing is high carbon. It's a farriers rasp. So um friction fit down on there. Uh, these are meant for throwing. I don't know if they will throw them. Hopefully they end up in a case never ever touched again. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they, they are meant to be used and they are full on fully capable tomahawks, just mini. So, um, now when I was getting these, Jake said, I think your 13 year old can probably handle a full size tomahawk. And I said, yes, but that ego, you know, so we'll, let's, let's keep it, let's keep it small for now. And then if she shows an affinity for Tomahawks, well, there will be plenty down the line for her. So I wanted to show these off, the Brave Hawk Forge BB Hawks. You can go to Brave Hawk Forge and order these, uh, though you will not get them for Christmas now. I got, I got in right under the wire. I got in right under the wire for that. Excuse me. No one should have to see that, but my chair just slipped down. All right, next up. I got a box of five knives from Dave, this old sword blade reviews, and he indicated that they were for mm, 
adoption for giveaway. So I'm, I'm still working all that out. Um, but uh, I have one in this group that honestly, I think I left it at work. So I'm, I'm, I'm very bummed about that. I don't have it to show you. It's the Vision FG. We all know what that is. It's on everyone's knife of the year list. And dag nabbit, I don't have it here to show you. But I'm sure you know what that is. So he sent me that. And that was the one I was really excited about. Um, but there are three others that are very exciting too. First one is the Picaro. This one uh, is a, a really unique looking knife and at a great size. That's a four inch blade. So it's about a nine inch overall, uh, just under nine inches. Sorry, my left hand. Uh, it's on washers, which I love. It's very thinly hollow ground. And it's got this really cool design flourish, that big opening hole with the floating um, thumb stud in it. And, you know, it works. It works to open it with the opening hole or the thumb stud. Um, so I was always really drawn to this knife, never got it. Uh, this was on a lot of uh, favorites lists. And then it, it just went out of print. And so I'm really happy to, to have this sent along to me. Um, I'm going to hold on to it for a while and it might be given away. Uh, here's one that's going to get given away. This is a very unique one and super cool. This is from Michael Gav Gavick and Gavco Knives and uh, also Civivi. So this is his first collaboration with Civivi. I think he had done some with Wii. Um, the Spiny Dogfish, it's called. Spiny Dogfish. Very cool compound ground blade. Sort of a bellied sheep's foot or bellied worn cliff with this thinner portion here and then a thicker grind there you've got the long opening hole and a very slender slender handle here really fits the hand nicely like this and and i find it very handy like this if you're using it for a lot of draw cuts it just kind of sets itself up nicely uh between the palm and the fingers there so uh spiny dogfish this is in uh, d2 and uh, this is also in d2 and then here in uh, 9CR, we have the Backlash, one of the very originals, one of the first three models that Civivi ever came out with, and they're still making it. It's so nice. It feels so great in hand, um, and it's a fantastic flipper. That uh, that flipper design and position uh, just is perfect. It just flies out with authority um liner lock very thinly hollow ground 9 cr blade and then the cool thing about this one is it's an ebony wood so a beautiful piece of wood on both sides nicely milled with that fine um with those fine parallel lines there and a beautiful harpoon shaped drop point blade i'm going to call it a drop point not a clip point i don't know why but i just am uh, and then the the last thing he sent me was a petrified fish, a really handsome knife here. This is the Warrior, and this came out with a little bit of fanfare, I do remember. Great flipper, great flipper design, very nice blade shape, and uh, ergonomics on this are melt in the hand. Um, it just really fits nicely. And then you've got a fully crowned spine, including the swedge. And sumptuously, I'm going to use that word, contoured uh, canvas micarta. Really, really nice. And then you see a little fish. I guess it's a marlin or a swordfish there. The warrior. This is K110 blade steel. K110 is analogous to D2. It's a bowler steel. And uh, so uh, it's somewhat budget, but it's going to, you know, it'll take you most of the way there probably unless you're uh, some sort of underwater diver who cuts steel with your blade. All right, so that is what we got here in the um, state of the collection. I'm, I'm very, very happy and uh, grateful to Dave for sending these along, of course. Um, it's always nice to experience new knives. It's also nice to share the wealth. I'm a very fortunate person. I get knives sent to me, and, um, and I've, I've accumulated a lot of knives under my own steam over a lot of years, and so it's nice to be able to share with people. So thank you, Dave. All right, let us get to my case collection. Now, this might be where some people turn off the podcast because 
Case is a polarizing brand. Uh, and I think it might be because of the sometimes spotty uh, QC. Sometimes we don't get what we're expecting. Now, granted, we are expecting a lot this day and age. So we expect our, our knife companies to keep up. But I have had almost nothing but good luck with case knives. Um, I think I think if we want to look to a company for um, inspiration in quality control, it's got to be Victorinox. Have you ever seen a Victorinox with an issue? I certainly haven't, and I've I've handled a lot of Victorinoxes. Something they just they make them the same every time. Now, case knives a little more uh, a little more do, uh, prone to variation, so it might take a little bit more in terms of collecting. I'm, I know a lot of people say if you can open the knife, you know, ha handle the knife first. If you're buying it in a store, see if you can handle the knives and then choose from there. I've never had that opportunity, um, but I have had some very good luck. Okay, let's start this off. First one is, I'm going to go from smallest to largest. First one is the canoe, the case canoe. And the canoe is a pattern that has a um, main blade of a clip point and then a Whoops, that's got a nice spring on it. And then it's got a pen blade. So, ah, ah, mm. oh, Jesus. Mm. Sorry, guys, first one. <laughs> first one, uh, I was going to say, the whole idea behind that, um, those two blades, is back in the day, the blade steels weren't that stout, weren't, didn't have great, <laughs> I'm sorry, didn't have great edge retention. So the idea was you'd have two blades, you'd have a main blade there, and then you'd have the, um, which you would use for most tasks. And then you would have the secondary blade, the, <laughs> the uh, pen blade that you would keep razor sharp, like I do, for all other sort of tasks uh, that, you might, um, that you might have once you dull out the main blade. This one is a purple Corallon, um, edition so they were really uh, uh one thing about case that makes them so collectible is that they do all these different series with different handle materials well whether they're bone or synthetic or or wood or what have you and um and so they'll put out a, a line with uh, all the same handle materials and the same steel so this was in honor of Coralon, which is a um, a synthetic material and uh, used on countertops and other stuff. And here it is on my knife that just sliced me so badly. All right. Second is a beautiful uh, one. This is from the Chestnut Bone series, which I love so much. The Chestnut Bone series is a, um, our CV blades. Um, and like I've mentioned many, many times on this show, it seems to me that Case Knives takes special care with their um, CV blade lines because they make so many fewer of them. Um, and maybe I guess they have to do a, use a different process and such that they just seem to be better made. I guess that's all I got to say. Better made, no gapping and the blade, the blades work really well. Um, the CV blade steel is great. So this company, Case Knives, started out, this is another peanut, so it has another secondary blade there. They started out, four brothers, W.R. Case and Sons, started out in 1890, and, or I'm sorry, 1889, and they were making pocket knives and selling them on a wagon trail in Pennsylvania, which I think is so cool. Like this, this knife brand goes way back. And, um, so they would take it and, and sell them to a lot of people uh, on the wagon trail, became well known for it, and um, eventually opened up a factory in Bradford, PA. And since then, so that's over 100 years, since then they've been, what was that, 130 some odd years, they've been pumping out these great knives in a, at a more um, automated pace, but they're still handmade. And... Um, you can see all about it. You can see a uh, an episode of how they're how it's made, and they go to the case factory. That's pretty cool. And then I was just on their website watching a video that they make, and they show the whole uh, process. Pretty cool. Okay, next up, this one I got from a Dick's Sporting Goods before they were 
uh, totally, um, you know, castrated. And uh, when they sold knives, I guess is what I mean. And uh, I bought two of the knives in this in this um, collection there. And this one is not a very common one. This is the jackknife, the medium jack. So like a peanut, it's got a main uh, clip point, and then it's got a, um, uh, what do you call this? A pen blade, no half stops, stainless steel. This is one of their kind of um, less doted over models. You can see the, uh, you can see all of the grind lines on this one. Uh, they usually go for a real high polish on their blades. I like these ones that they don't polish up so much. They really take a great edge. This one has done a lot of crap duty, if you know what I mean. Like this one has been uh, living in my dresser drawer for years. And anytime I, I have a tag to cut off or whatever, I don't know. This one is always kind of getting into it. I'm always cleaning this one off um, and sharpening it up. This is a great knife. I love these little ones. They call them sometimes... Uh, the Texas jackknife, if it's in the Amber Bone series. Um, and in that one, the blade ratio, the blade to handle ratio is thrown off a bit. Um, okay, next up is, this is a beloved knife for me. I love this one so much. Uh, this is the Case Swayback Jack. This one is designed by the great and powerful and late Tony Bowes. And it's just a beautiful uh uh, worn cliff on a wonderful little swayback frame. Uh, it has a pretty nice uh, uh, swayback shaped handle. You know, sometimes like say with uh, Ben Belkin's swaybacks, he's kind of flattened it out a little bit. Well, this one goes across the hand in such a way uh, that the curve is more extreme. And so it's really great for the sort of inward sort of pairing motion. Uh, this is also in that chestnut bone that I find so beautiful. I had a mini trapper in in chestnut bone that i got rid of which i'm very sad about i wish i still had that knife uh these take on great patinas though i polished this one up recently but i love case cv's patina uh capability uh, all of these have nickel silver bolsters by the way and and case i i defy you to find someone who who dyes bone better than case uh, they they just do such a beautiful job on their bone I mean, GEC is pretty amazing, too. Look at that. So nice. All right, next up, speaking of beautiful, exotic-looking bone, this one is from their Purple Barn Door uh, series. So it's sort of a saw-cut pattern in this purple bone. And the bone is, it's just, it's beautiful. Uh, this is um, a Barlow, which is now going to be a part of their regular um lineup uh they brought it out of the vault i think in 2020 and um with different blade shapes and you know how they do that every year they'll bring out an old design well it was so popular they're going to just be bringing it back and well it is back i guess i should say and this is one of those knives representing its backness uh barlow has a is, is a traditional working man's knife it's got um a uh, bolster that goes about one third the length of the blade that gives or of the handle which uh, allows you to make a larger tang and that just gives you more uh, greater lateral strength which is important in a work knife uh, this one of course uh, has that beautiful clip point traditional style clip point blade and then on the other side with the nail neck on the other side which i appreciate is the uh pen blade uh, now I've gotten a number, this is one of them. I've gotten maybe three or four new cases recently. And I have to say they come sharp, but they come jagged. The edge is not, uh, the edge has taken on all of them a little bit of work on my stone just to smooth out and to get right. But this one has a really nice walk and talk on both blades, probably sitting around a six or seven. <laughs> I say that kind of half jokingly because every my six could be your eight could be his 10. So, um, okay. So next up is one that I've wanted for a long time and I had a buck and then I gave it away. And so I finally ha was able to get one of these into my collection. This is a case canoe and that's in that Amber jigged bone CV blade steel. When you see CV, that's Chrome vanadium. That's, that's, uh, their carbon steel, though now 
they're using 1095 and labeling it as carbon uh, carbon steel. So you'll see later on, you'll see a uh, a bolster that says CS. So a beautiful knife with a handle shaped like a canoe. You can see these um, bolsters. Uh, these bolsters line up with the handle to make a canoe shape. As you can see here on uh, that etching. I love that classical etching with the Indian in the boat. And then when you look at it, it's got a downward canted blade, which really does uh, help with the with the cutting. It traps material. We talk about recurves and downward angled blades on this show all the time. So uh, you don't see it often in a, um, a traditional slip joint knife. You'll see the spine continue along the path of the spine of the handle, but you'll see the blade, uh, the edge dip down. Uh, but this is a, a pretty pretty cool way of doing it. And then over here, you've got, on the other side, you've got a pen blade. And so having single blades on either side, I think that technically makes a canoe a pen blade of sorts, doesn't it? Let me know. Let me know if you think so. CV blade steel on that. Very nice. Now, this next one is, a, is an exclusive from Deadwood Knives. Uh, they have, if you like case knives and you don't know Deadwood, you should go check them out. Um, they have a lot of cool traditionals. This one is similar to this. It really caught my eye because it's similar to my one of my favorite case knives, this very pedestrian jackknife. <clears throat> this has that purple synthetic, and it's, as you can tell from its makeup, it is a stockman, meaning it's got a main blade clip point. This one is sort of a California Skinner blade. Um, it's got a sheep's foot, but unlike most um, Stockman knives, this one has a punch or all instead of a spay blade. So it's got a nice, very oblique, but very sharp edge right here. Nice pointy tip, and it's got a, a stout spring here. So if you need to bore a hole in something... That's your tool. So this is caught, oftentimes referred to as a cattleman's stockman because of that all. But it seems like all stockmen are kind of cattlemen anyway, aren't they? Isn't that kind of <laughs> redundant? But I look forward to this patinaing in a natural way because um, I like the way the case knives look when they patina. But I've forced some patinas in the past and they never look good. They never work out for me. So I always end up polishing them out and then letting it happen naturally. And usually cutting steak is a great way of doing it or apples or potatoes, raw potatoes. Uh, okay, so that is the Case Stockman uh, Deadwood exclusive, Deadwood Knives exclusive. A very nice one. Here is a famous one, the Sod Buster Jr. This is also in CV or that carbon vanadium steel and yellow del rin i love the yellow del rin models they're so cheery i i would never really opt for yellow in any other knife uh, but in a case um, now when you look at it close up like that with the patina on it that gray blade next to that yellow and the brass pins i think it's very beautiful to look at and it also is very evocative of an older time this is like a knife uh, this is definitely a grandfa uh, grandfather style knife um, and a work knife. That's what sod busters are. They're farmer's knives. They're meant to be simple and robust and hand filling and uh, able to get the job done. And this one certainly is. I do like the case sod busters. I have two of them. You'll see another one down the, down the row. And I would like to get one with the bone. But I have heard that to be a true sod buster, you need that really big pivot like you see there. And when you see the bone sod busters, um, they cannot make a pivot that big because if you make the hole that wide, that means the bone around the periphery of the hole is going to be too thin and likely to crack. Um, so they make it with a small uh, pivot, which kind of takes away from it actually being a sod buster. But but their case, and uh, they coined the the term, so who am I? Who am I to say? Uh, but one of those has to be in my future. 
All right, next up, the Slimline Trapper, a single-bladed knife, a great, great little steak knife, pop-in-the-pocket knife. This one is uh, in Jigged Brown Delrin. Um, I got this one from a local hardware store that I discovered sells case knives. And I need to get back over there and buy another one. I want to encourage this behavior. I want our local purveyors to sell case knives um, instead of the cheap whatever they're selling. Uh, this one has no half stop. Most of these cases do not have half stops, uh, but it's got a nice about five weight pull. And um, I've recently gone on a sharpening kick, and this one is sharper than it's ever been. It is a, it is a super, it's like a razor, very sharp edge. Uh, that's, again, that uh, sort of untreated stainless like we saw on the jackknife. Uh, you can still see those um grind lines and everything and it's not polished so very nice knife i i love these slim line trappers i wouldn't mind getting one in ye yellow del rin um, it's a very useful knife and if you like your single bladed knives uh, i think it's one of the best out there because it's biggish uh, but it's slender and light and it gives you it gives you a good amount of cutting edge next up a trapper trapper standard trapper at four and a quarter inch or four and an eighth inch long trapper. Uh, again, that yellow Del Rin, you've got the CV blade steel and the nickel silver bolsters. And look at that. Beautiful patinaed clip point blade there. And then of course, all standard trappers come with a secondary blade and your secondary blade here is that um, spay blade. Love that spay blade. It's a great butter knife. Uh, it spreads butter in a pinch. It's a great steak knife. It's great for food. I think the shape of that works great uh, for food because I am not spaying any uh, any animals. Uh, but if I need to, I know where to go. No gapping in any of these so far. Uh, that's not true. There's a little bit of gapping in this barlow where you can see a, a, a tiny bit of light. Uh, but most of these are gap-free, which is nice because I did not examine them to make sure that they're gap free. And lo and behold, I lucked out. Again, this uh, this was a Dick's Sporting Goods purchase years ago, and I sure wish they would still sell case knives. All right. Second trapper in this collection is the um, is a stainless steel, polished stainless steel version. Uh, and I Love You Daddy series, which um, my wife got for me shortly after we had our first child and uh, it's that smooth white bone which is beautiful and coveted Let's see if we can get that to focus yeah just beautiful um all the transitions between the pins and the bolsters and the bone uh you just don't feel them beautifully polished uh stainless steel blades and there, you got the secondary um, spay blade there. Big fan of the Trapper. I do love the Trapper. Uh, to me, that seems to be the most common knife out there. But um, I recently watched a video. I think it was Blade HQ. Uh, had a video of their most... Po oh, no, no. It was Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Their most popular, uh, most selling patterns. And uh, it was not the Trapper. Trapper was number two. What do you think number one was? All right, next up, this one. Oh, man, this is a beaut. I have been wanting a larger than tiny toothpick for a long time. And this is another one that Case has started to make, again, the medium toothpick. They don't really make the large toothpick anymore. I think that's pretty much discontinued uh, for Case. But the medium toothpick is alive and kicking again. And... Just beautiful. Look at the shape of that, of that uh, clip point, that Calif California clip point or Turkish clip point blade. It is beautiful. You're like, what is it? Is it Turkish or is it California? And I ask you, does it matter? It's gone by both. <laughs> so that is the Smoky Valley Sunset Autumn Bone. Let me say that again. Smoky Valley Sunset Autumn Bone. And it is as beautiful in real life as it looks on camera. You've got these nice nickel silver bolsters. Uh, you have about a five pull on this, no half stop. Um, pretty decent snap going in. 
eh, it's not the strongest uh, snapping knife, but uh, I have found now, I don't know if this is uh, just psychosomatic or if it's, or if it's true, but I have found that slip joint knives kind of get a little bit stiffer the longer you have them. Um, uh, the last one I show you is a couple down from here. That is certainly the case for that. It even lost its blade play. But it's not because there's all sorts of crap stuck in there. It's just sort of tightened up. But anyway, this this uh, I do recommend you check out this series. Uh, they, they put a lot of effort into this. This is, you can see carbon steel uh, right there. And um, this Smoky Valley, uh, Smoky Valley Sunset Autumn Bone series is really beautiful. And like I said, with the, with the ones that they... They don't do often like the CV and the carbon. And then especially a special run of something like that. They they pay more attention. All right. Next up, this one has been getting tons of use. I got this recently, um, but I've been carrying it everywhere all the time in my jacket and everything. Um, and this is the trapper, just the regular amber jig bone jumbo trapper in CV blade steel. Got a nice patina working on that clip point which has pretty pretty decent uh, action. Uh, a lighter pull on this, but man, I've used this a lot. This is a very, very useful uh, sheep's foot. It, look at how angled down it is. It's really nice, very thin, and it's a hollow grind. So this thing just zips through cardboard uh, like it's not there. And then, of course, a spay blade, which comes off of that curved frame in a, in a cool way. Plus, the this contour here really keeps this in your hand if you're going to be using this uh, i'm sure you're not going to be spaying anything with it but if you use it for skinning something small or whatever it seems like this handle would be uh, a great would be great for comfort and retention so i do love the stockman series or the stockman design and and i would like to collect more as i as i age all right, second to last, another Tony Bowes design. Uh, this is a big one. It's called the Back Pocket. And this is a part of their Carhartt series. So they did a, a series with uh, Carhartt years back. <clears throat> and this was, the, this was the Back Pocket from that series. Now, as you can see here, you might be able to see the pin slightly right there. When you see the pin coming through the bolster like that, oftentimes it means... The user, like myself, has taken a mallet to the to the um, bolster and hit it a couple of times just to tighten this area up. If you if you're getting blade play, I must have had blade play on this at one time. I don't anymore, um, and took care of it that way. On this one again, you've got that unfinished steel, which makes sense. Even though this is a special run for Carhartt, it makes sense. It's it's on brand for Carhartt to have a sort of workman style uh, treatment to the blade. Uh, this one I got nice and sharp also. Um, this is G10, like a brown G10 uh, with with knurling. It's really nice. Um, and then the back pocket knives oftentimes have the lanyard hole. And then this one came with a little case, braided case fob. And uh, where do you carry this? Yeah, you carry this in the back pocket. Big knives like this are supposed to be carried in the back. All right, and the last one, this was the coveted, well, it wasn't coveted, but this was the 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 much, much honored muffin knife. So this was in my car for years uh, when my daughters were little and I was driving them to and from school. We would always stop by Wegmans or frequently stop by Wegmans and get muffins. And, and then I would cut them in half and they would get half on the way to school and half on the way back. And this was the, this was the knife that was used for that, yes. Yes, it's like a ceremonial dagger found in a tomb, this thing. Um, also from, from an older Workman series with that very plain but nice blue synthetic handle material. I think it's Delrin. Um, brass liners. This one had all sorts of play, and uh, but somehow that has worked out. You're like, it's all the muffin jammed in the, in the pivot over, the over time. I don't think it is. I've flushed this out. I've cleaned it out. Just something about it. Maybe it was being in the car, shrank it, uh, heated it up around the blade tang a little bit and made it made it stouter, a stouter action. Not sure. Not sure, but why bother asking? Just just go with the mystery. That's that's been the theme here today. We've we've been seeing the tactical mystery, now this mystery. Um, what is life without mystery? Um, 
certainly it's something I don't think I could bear. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on uh, this edition of the Knife Junkie podcast and for checking out my case knives with me. I've been so excited uh, about case knives recently, uh, pulling out my old ones, resharpening them, getting them, um, getting them to be what, what I love, um, which is, you know, in great shape. And I love the uh, slip joints, you know, these days. So anyway, case knives, you like them or do you hate them? Uh, have I justified too long? Well, I will move on. Um, okay, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, uh, where we give away this ultimate beauty, this beautiful, beautiful Microtech Reverse Tonto. All right, that does it for me. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, please, people, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.